sometimes it's just not going to come right to you. It's going to take some time and, like, thinking. Maybe you have to, like, go through, like, another piece of work, like, listen to some music to find, like, get some inspiration as to what you want to do with what your music. Try and make music that sounds powerful to you, and you don't always have to listen to what other people think sounds good, but just go with your own ear. Music that you're proud of, and said it will make you proud of your own music and your peers will learn to love the music you make as well it doesn't always have to be based on what they like oh it's about that curiosity i'm like a curious person i always like want to learn more about something if i don't know much about it i want to learn more about it maybe they they don't know that they you know they're good at music but if if they have a music class then they might figure out like i'm good at this so then they might continue doing it so i just think it's really good for young people to do music. You are listening to Education Through Music, the podcast. As always, I'm your host, Noah, and I'm particularly excited to bring you this episode, which will combine the voices and experiences of students, teacher, and support staff at Education Through Music to tell the story of a pretty unique musical undertaking. Over the past month, high school students at ETM Partner Schools have been working on original compositions to submit as entries in a competition. The requirements for these entries and the person scoring them made this a truly one-of-a-kind experience. To tell us about the origins of this competition, here is ETM Director of Programs, Stephanie Nantel. Well, it first got started when I was talking to one of our instructional supervisors, Dr. Adam Beard, about a unit that he made um, called Trap Beats for Change. And here's Dr. Beard, who you might recognize from episode two of the show. So Trap Beats for Change is a repertoire unit. When we made these, we chose specific pieces of music that we used to pull musical concepts out of and to dictate the projects that students would do. Uh, The repertoire for this unit is Little Baby's The Bigger Picture, which is a song uh, characterized by the elements synonymous with the trap subgenre of hip-hop. This is a song that uh, was written in response to the George Floyd killings, Um, and has a social justice message uh, related to the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, So the project that I wanted students to do was to make their own trap song and utilize audio samples uh, that promote a positive message for a social justice topic of their choosing. When I saw his unit, I thought it was really interesting and unique, and I was really moved by it. And I, I said, well, who's going to do this? How do we know that people are going to do this? And he said, well, I don't know. We, we send it out to the teachers, and we encourage and we talk to them. So I said, well, let's, let's make sure that everyone does this unit. And thus, when an opportunity came up to think about doing a songwriting competition, I thought, well, what about instead of writing songs? What if we used Adam's Trap Beat for Change unit to do a composition competition? We decided to do it in our three high schools because we wanted to have a manageable group of kids. You know, we serve about 20,000 students in New York City, so 20,000 entries would not be something that we could so easily manage to pick a winner. So the requirements for the competition was basically to complete the project. The project had two basic requirements. One was that it would be composed of a trap beat, and the other that it incorporated sampled material on a social justice issue. The main element of trap music um, is the way that the drum beat is constructed. Um, So a a trap drum beat has a halftime feel. Um, Also, the hi-hat patterns are known for having triplets within them. Um, And then usually the kicks are replaced with 808 bass notes. Um, So these are also the musical concepts that students interact with and engage with throughout the unit, Uh, primarily learning about triplets, 
uh, but also how to actually make uh, a beat based with triplets uh, within the digital audio workstation, which is a little bit more involved than what they would do if they were just making a duple based beat. So I just wanted students to pick a social justice topic that resonated with them. Um, I provided a list of possible topics to sort of guide their choice, as well as within each of those topics, um, I found some sources of things like speeches or protests or marches. And the idea is that regardless of whether students choose to use those things or they find their own sources, uh, the students were tasked with actually collecting the audio samples on their own um, and putting it within the music that they create. And then the teachers were to use a rubric that had been created with the project to assess their own students. And then they were able to send their top choices um, onto our programs team. After being narrowed down by the programs team, three finalists were sent along to Chris Atlas, who you might remember from Notables episode two. Chris is an executive with decades of experience in the music industry, and he was kind enough to agree to judge the competition for us. But before any of that could happen, someone had to teach the students. This is Lee Dines. He's one of the three ETM high school music teachers tasked with teaching the Trap Beats for Change unit to his students. I'm Mr. Dines. I'm the music tech and mu instrumental music instructor at Hudson High School of Learning Technologies. I'm going to uh, talk to some of your students shortly, uh, and so I'll, I'll hear it from them too, but how did your students respond to this project when you first presented it to them? In general, people got really into drawing in the, the drum beats, you know, in, in MIDI, you know, uh, making a track for hi-hat, one for snare, one for kick drum, uh, one for 808. And there's a really great video I found on YouTube that, that helped them that really just kind of laid out the process. And like, they really got into doing that, you know, um, chopping up the hi hats, um, throwing a kick in random parts of the beat and seeing what it sounds like, like they really got into that. And I think and then of course there's always the sort of sculpting of the piece, which that's, I think with most projects, that's when, you know, once you've done all the detail work and now you're actually just building the form and trying to make it longer, trying to make it like sound professional, like students get kind of obsessive about that, which is always a good thing. Cause it reminds me of myself when I was learning music, it's like, yep, like I see you, you're like, they're like, no, 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 just give me a second, Mr. Dines, I'm almost done. It's like the class is, is over, you know? And they're <laughs> like, still, wait, I just gotta put this extra, this outro in. And it's like, I know, believe me, I get it. Like you're in that place <laughs> where like, you're getting obsessive about yeah. it and that's great to see. So yeah, I would say both those things. The zone, you, the you zone. found yeah. the zone in, They're in, in the class zone. and, and yeah. flow while you, you uh, managed to like open up a, a, an access point for the flow state. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Arrangement. You're describing like arrangement and mm -hmm. the, this sort of obsession with, with getting the arrangement right. And mm -hmm. I think there are lots of different potentially exciting mm -hmm. and, and, you know, p potentially, um, sort of obsession affirming mm -hmm. points in the creative process. I wonder if that's just the, that's yours. And so that's theirs now, you know, it could be because I, I've placed a lot of emphasis on form this year because yeah, I um, see you have Rondo written over yeah. here and you got, the, yeah. yeah. Well, and, you know, the th interesting thing about music tech is that, um, it, it gives students really great immediate gratification because you can just click and drag a loop in and start building the sound of a whole band um, in like 30 seconds. And before you know it, you have this like block of loops that sounds like a song and that's amazing, but we can't just be clicking and dragging stuff. We have to bring in like some, I don't wanna say music theory, but some musical concepts, I guess is, the, is what I mean. Some musical concepts so that they're getting a meta awareness because a lot of times, like if you don't talk about form with students and they're doing music tech, <clears throat> they'll their piece will get this kind of like it's like a meditative like one it, one section that just keeps going and it develops. It maybe you know they'll have one bass drum or what or I mean uh, one bass part and a drum part 
and like a keyboard loop in there. And it's those stay the same throughout the entire piece. And then they'll add more things in and then take them away, which is a perfectly legitimate type of form. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but especially if you do it on purpose, but mm -hmm. if you're, if you don't know that there's, Oh, you can literally just like chop everything right there at measure 17 and change it all and have a new section. You know, if you don't, if you don't know to do that, you might not do that, you know? And so, yeah, so that was a, that was a big focus for us all year because, you know, it's making use of like the immediate ease of being able to access music with, with logic and garage band and, and soundtrack, which is really amazing. But also like, how do we work in like higher level musical thinking in that? I think it was really great to, uh, involve, social justice issues, you know, um, into a school project. Like I've been meaning to find a way to do that, uh, this year. And that was a really great way to do it. Um, the students, it's kind of interesting. They, they really want to talk about that stuff. Like, even if they don't act like they do, you know, like if I presenting, I made a little PowerPoint for them. And if, you know, they're like, uh, they don't act like they care about this PowerPoint, which maybe they don't, it's fine. It's a PowerPoint, but like, when they start working on it, you know, the choices that they were making were like really, really interesting and really thoughtful. And, you know, they, I mean, it must be like this generation because I think they're just really, that stuff is on their minds like all the time and they want to talk about it. Um, and they want to get to the bottom of some of these things. So that was really huge, I think. Yeah. It sounds like, you know, not everybody comes into a music class wanting to do exactly the you know what you want to teach but there's always an entry point regardless of the subject matter there's an entry point for everybody in it yeah um sounds like this is a pretty good entry point yeah i i love doing the cross-curricular stuff i mean like i always have students when i'm doing it being like that like the most common thing i hear it's like i thought this was music class mr dines and i <laughs> this isn't history class this isn't whatever but they love it i mean like at the end of the day like if you know when i say okay no give this a shot please and they they do it and they they re get really into it and they make brilliant results and speaking of brilliant results let's hear from some of these students and let's hear some of their music my name is Eve Baser, and I am a junior at Hudson High School. And what was your project about? It was about uh, women's rights, equal rights for women. I think it's so important that women are treated the same as men, like paid the same for equal work, equal pay. I think it's such an important topic. Could you walk me through the process of how you built your composition? Yeah, so I uh, I went onto YouTube and I looked up the best women's rights speeches by influential figures. And then I took the speeches from that video and implemented it into my composition. And then I created a trap mix around those sounds. It started with a hi-hat and then you made something and then I just went by ear what sounded the best with the kick drum and the snare after that to create my composition. Sometimes I wanted the speech to be by itself so you could really get the the power that it brought from that speech but I also wanted the music on top of it so it kind of connected in the composition so I kind of switched. Sometimes it's by itself and then sometimes it's with music. You're a piano player, right? Yeah, I play piano and I play guitar as well. Cool. Do you find it's it's one or the other? Or do you find you're able to do really cool stuff by mixing the, you know, the technology with the physical instruments? I think it's it's definitely based off the physical ones, but when you add in the technology instruments, it's it really makes it that much better. Human rights are women's rights, and women's rights are human rights. Women are not even accepted as human beings.
and inequality. And I think it is right that I am paid the same as my male counterpart. I think it is right that I should be able to make decisions about my own body. No woman should sit down and allow a man to speak about her reproductive rights. Hi, my name is Mamadou. I go to um, Hudson High School of Learning Technologies. What was your process for creating your composition? Mr. Dai um, started off by giving us like samples. Like, we also watched another video addition to that, like like the um like the clean grins to making a trap beat. I was like not sure like how 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 well I like put it put it together mm -hmm. because uh, it's like the first time I'm doing this. But Mr. Dodge showed us like how how you how you will get the um the the tools. From there on, it was, it was like um basically like a back and forth, like reassessing like does this fit? How how should I put this? What what what's like time like time point in the um clip? Should I put this in? And after after I did that, um I added the um the audio. Mm -hmm. I, I I chose a video from YouTube from like um D W. Or it was um the the Dutch oh Deutsche Welle Dutch Deutsche Welle yeah yeah Deutsche that's a, a German German, German yeah. news network yeah oh, that's cool okay yeah. so you made your beat first and yeah. then you found audio Audios. that would fit with yeah. the beat that with you had beat, created yeah. okay did did you know from the start that you were gonna build this around climate change or did you did you build the beat and then decide ah, this, this is going to fit with this audio, so I guess I'll do this on climate change. It was like in the middle. Mm -hmm. I, I already had like some beats I can put on around it. It, it was like, it was a question like, like what what part of the um the video like audio should I use? I found some like um ones that, that I thought was very impactful. Yeah. Like, like how like the rich, the, the richer countries are like less affected and are like the kind of like the cause. Right. Yeah. They're, the they're both the cause and less impacted. Less by. impacted. Both. Yeah. It's uneven. Many of the harm that are caused by climate change come from countries that traditionally have been more wealthy. It's impossible to talk about the climate crisis without acknowledging communities of color, lower wealth communities, and indigenous people who have been disproportionately impacted. born the brunt of this ongoing crisis due to a history of systemic racism that exposed these communities to toxins and disease. I'm Timothy Lewis, a freshman at Hudson High School. My project, I'm not gonna lie, I like really liked it a lot. It was it's, it was a really long process. Your piece has maybe some plucked strings, like a, a, a synth plucked string, if I remember yeah. correctly. First of all, is that a loop or is it a MIDI instrument? Loop. Nice, okay, so yeah. what about that loop spoke to you? The way it sounded, it sounded just like so clean and like it went with my my uh, beat well. So I felt like it would like, it wouldn't just be like one certain sound the whole time. It would like switch up the flow a bit. Yeah, yeah. And your your piece is like particularly dynamic. It, there was a lot of time in which it's like pretty open and, and there isn't a whole lot happening. And then there's other times where there's a, a lot happening. And that sort of dynamic nature to it, I think, keeps listeners glued in because they're like, I know something's coming. It's a little too quiet right now. So 
what were you what were you thinking about as you put things together in the timeline getting like to that point in the song i'm not gonna lie i like songs that have like they build up like that kind of like feeling to it also feedback from my uh, music teacher and like listening to stuff from my dad because he makes music as well so i'm not gonna lie that like influenced like how i wanted to make it a lot they really teach kids this white kid right here got it better than you because he white you gonna personally tell a white kid, oh, the black people are all down and suppressed. How do I have two medical degrees if I'm sitting here oppressed? No mom, no dad in the house. Work my way through college. Sat there and hustle my butt off and get through college. You gonna tell me somebody look like all y'all white folks kept me from going there? Black folks are getting told by other black folks. Oh, uh, you ain't gonna do nothing out there in the world because white folks ain't gonna let you get no... The white man, the white man gonna keep you down. Well, how did I get where I am right now if some white man kept me down? How am I now directing over folks that look just like you guys in this room right now? How? What if we place freedom from racist violence at the crux of what it means to be free and equal in the United States? Doing so does not mean that we necessarily dislodge education, but it means that if racism and white supremacy are a rock fortress, we assemble a greater arsenal of weapons to break the damn thing down. People discriminate against other black people and other ethnicities have prejudices and discriminate against black people as well. We must all help break the barriers of individual and systemic racial discrimination. Implement this into the school system, I guarantee to the day that I die, I'm gonna be the very first right there, debunk this stuff, tear stuff down, let them know they can do exactly what I did, get exactly what I am by putting themselves work and getting their ain't now one white person ever said that I was wrong. Don't keep any of them from getting there. So the CRT stuff, BS. So we've heard a lot of great music over the course of the episode so far, and we've gained a lot of valuable insight from these student composers. The next student composer from whom we will hear wrote the piece of music that was chosen as the overall winner of the competition. So uh, my name is Ulleli Lilund. Uh, I'm 17 years old. I'm from Sweden, um, born in Sweden, and I've lived in New York since 2022. Uh, so the thing was, I had to pick a, an issue, and um, I picked them. Um, it was a, from a video. Uh, it was gun violence, and uh, it also they talked a little bit about little bit about racism as well. But it was the video itself was mostly about gun violence, and I picked that because um, you know, for me, like coming, this was one thing from this year, like not in music, but it was in another class. In Sweden, you know, we don't have like the type of gun laws as here. So it was like three weeks in my school year here and we had a lockdown drill. And I was like, what is this? And people told me that it's because of school shootings. And that kind of shocked me like, oh, you really like you really have to practice how to, you know, go about it. So that kind of shocked me. And you hear about it on the news pretty often, you know, gun, uh, gun violence. And often also it's like, it's so much gun violence so that a lot of it doesn't even make the news because it happens so often. So I just thought it was a good, 
video to pick. So I just downloaded it and I picked out the best, like the most powerful um, uh, clips. So I put them, firstly, I put them in the intro and then, you know, Dines told me that I could put it, you know, in the bridge or like in between the parts. So I kind of just put it throughout the song. I always liked music that has uh, like clips from it. I like when it's like, it flows with the beat. So it kind of sometimes comes in like the vocal. So, you know, I, in the beginning I had a, a vocal. It starts with the vocal. So I kind of listened to it and I wanted it like right before, cause um, I should explain it. Her, like her voice, it was, um, it was getting like she was talking and then I noticed like a point where she was like really powerful and really like passionate. So right when she like ended her words, that's when I put the hi-hat in. So it's like fades up with the vocal and then the beat comes in. And I kind of put the same in the, so later a guy is talking. So when he's talking, he says like no more. So he says no more. So when he says the word more, the beat comes in again, so like no more, and then the beat comes. So I wanted it to match with the vocals. I am here today to acknowledge and represent the African American girls whose stories don't make the front page of every national newspaper. I represent the African American women who are victims of gun violence, who are simply statistics instead of vibrant, beautiful girls that pull up potential. For far too long, these names, these black girls and women have been just numbers. I'm here to say never again for those girls too. Whose stories don't lead on the evening news. Thanks for sharing your insight and, and your story. Anytime, man. No problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.